it's hard to overestimate just how much broadband changed the internet. Back when you had to connect to the internet using dial-up, information traveled slowly, pages took forever to load, and watching this video would have been impossible. Today's internet is a completely different creature, which is why it's so puzzling that the last time Congress passed major legislation for regulating the internet was 1996. And so the task of regulating the internet has fallen to five unelected bureaucrats, the Federal Communications Commission. As the tools we use to access the internet have changed, they've had to decide what kinds of rules the companies that provide those tools should have to follow. And now, under a new commissioner appointed by President Trump, the FCC has altered those rules in a way that could fundamentally change how we use the internet. Take a deep breath. This decision will not break the internet. This decision puts the Federal Communications Commission on the wrong side of history. It creates a free-for-all that we have not had on the internet in the past. And that's very, very dangerous. It's going to be f***ed. What we're seeing here is the cableization of the internet. This is a dark day for innovation. This is a dark day for small business. It is a dark day for consumers. First, let's define what most people mean when they talk about net neutrality. A good working consensus model that most would agree with is the idea that internet service providers should treat all traffic more or less the same on their network. This means the companies whose wires and towers we use to access the internet can't block or slow down data from certain sites or apps. They can't make special deals to move certain data along faster than everybody else's. Internet content providers like Facebook, Google, and Netflix, they love net neutrality. Because it means that even if some of their products, like streaming this video, for example, take up a lot more bandwidth than others, like email, internet service providers can't charge them extra for getting all that data to our phones and computers. Which is exactly why ISPs like Comcast, Verizon, and AT&T hate it. If they could charge Netflix and YouTube extra for those big packets of data, they could make a lot of money. And now that the FCC has scrapped the net neutrality rules, they almost certainly will. ISPs will also be able to charge customers more to access sites or apps that take up more bandwidth. And some argue this will mean more choices for consumers. My sense is this would be fantastic, right? Because my daughter chews through my Verizon data cap every month and all she ever does is Instagram. So if I could pay like 20 bucks and get her a phone that I could text with her and talk with her, but would allow her to use Instagram and get her off my standard data plan, that would be great. But by privileging established tools like Instagram, these plans could make it a lot harder for new ones to break through. It's a time when more than ever, we want to encourage and keep open a playing field for new services, new platforms, to be able to get in the game and provide a real alternative. I mean, imagine a world in which we were all still stuck with MySpace. I don't think you know that's what we want, but net neutrality is part of why that's not what we have. Until 2005, internet service providers were classified as common carriers, which meant the FCC could regulate them like phone companies. In the internet's early days, these regulations kept phone companies from charging customers extra for using dial-up services like AOL. And when phone companies started offering DSL broadband service over their lines, common carrier rules forced them to let their competitors use those lines too, which meant consumers had tons of choices when it came to picking an internet service provider. A 2003 page from the Washington Post lists 18 different DSL options for the Washington, D.C. region. Today, residents have less than half as many choices. So what happened? In 2005, the FCC did the same thing it did in 2017. It said ISPs weren't common carriers, and it stopped regulating them like phone companies. And without that regulation, ISPs became virtual monopolies. Today, two-thirds of Americans live in areas with just one choice for high-speed internet. And if their ISPs start blocking, slowing down, or charging more as a result of this rule change, their options are to put up with it or go without the internet. Despite the fact that majorities of both Republican and Democratic voters support net neutrality, it doesn't look like Congress or the FCC will be bringing it back anytime soon.